Okay, uh, welcome to Six Scale, everybody. It's July 28th, 2022. Let me share the link to the notes. Okay, please set yourself as an attendee. Okay, um, for today, uh, I just have one agenda item. Um, we can also do, we might also do the performance job results. Um, but I want to, uh, I, I mainly wanted to discuss uh, the, the Qvert V1 release and what we would like to do uh, with regards to, you know, with, with six scale, like how, so basically what I'm looking for is how, um, when we when we look at the Qvert V1 release, when it's officially done, what information can six scale contribute to that release? Um, so this is a bit of an open question. I really think there's a lot of avenues we can take, but um, kind of what I was what I'm looking for in terms of ideas, is like things like you know, can we say, you know, what's the what's Hubert's ability to scale? How many nodes? Um, I think is a question people would be interested in. Uh, how much memory is uh, this release expecting uh, for the Vert launcher, uh, or maybe even Qvert? In, as a whole, like well, I think all those things would be valuable. Um, maybe we could do a few things on, on the creation rate or something. I, I don't know. Like I think there's some some options that we have, but I, I think what I would I kind of want to get the idea like the idea starting to like get, I want to get us to start thinking about like what we could contribute because I think when this comes, I, I think probably. Um, I guess later in the, the year, I want to have some data ready that we can that we can contribute, and then and kind of as a foundation, then kind of build on those in the following releases. Like, you know, maybe we can, you know, after we do it once, we can try and see how we can improve it over time. So I, I don't know. I want to get some ideas. Like, you know, what do people think? What are some things that, say, you know, scale performance related? What are things we could do? You know, that that if people think are achievable to, we could say as part of a you know, keywords D1. I guess I'll add some of the ones I said, like um, keyword scale. Number of nodes. What else? Um, we'll say uh, launcher memory. Um, what other ideas that people have? Um, what would be valuable? Like, would it, if, if people opened up the keyword V1 release, like, what do people think would be valuable? Maybe. Um, Hello. I think Library also has memory consumption. Okay, so sorry, can you repeat that? You said, what about memory consumption? Libvert D. Oh, Libvert's memory consumption. Yes, okay. Yes. Okay. What else? Um, What else? What do you think customers would want to know? So scale. I mean, we have a little bit of performance. We have our launcher pod. I think that's this is so kind of way I look at this is like for launcher memory consumption. It's it's this is going to be like how many like if I wanted to say build a, a cluster and I need to know how much RAM I needed, you know, like so that I could have, you know, this many guests with, you know, this much get memory I want to provide them. I could then use this as, an, as a way to figure out, like, how much I need to, to handle the overhead from the launchers. So this can be helpful for my, my calculations. Same here, like, this could be good for a breakdown in terms of, like, how we want to, um, how we want to, 
shall we change over time? Like we don't want this to increase. Same here, like we with keyword scale, like this is something we want to measure and we want to see if we can increase over time. So, I mean, is there anything else? Like, do we need to, we need to figure out like, is there, I mean, the other one I said like the rate, I don't know, do we have like a, I mean, I, I could see like the number of like how, how fast we can create a certain amount of VMIs. Or VMs, would that be valuable? Yeah, I think like we can specify like because like there is this bullet performance and scale data. I think we, we would need to like say what, what what exactly like creation time or deletion time or like like as you said like rate. Um, probably like also like specifying what what is the hardware that that we we tested this this stuff on. Because that that's that's also mm -hmm. some kind of like a reference, um, um, yeah, yeah. So right, we need to. So well, we need to we need to talk about how we how what we did our testing on, and then data about how this testing went. Okay, so that's what to expect. Okay, I mean, I, I think like I, I don't, I don't, I do want to like overdo it, but I just want to get like, what it, are these like the things that like, like we could that we feel confident about, like when we say V one, like this is something that like we don't expect to regress, and we feel confident that these are these are going to be accurately seen in the wild. You know, I, that's kind of what I want to get out of this. So like number of nodes, I mean, I, I will have to do like, I, I think like for like, how would we get this information? I, I think, let's see, like, I think, I, I think we could start with like whoever has got the highest number of, of nodes like that we've seen in production. I mean, that might be a very simple way to test this or just as a, you know, just to advertise this metric. Cause I, I don't think we have a way to test this right now. So I think this could just be like, okay, um, so we've seen X number of nodes in prod, whatever that like. That, that Maybe also mean. like, because like number of nodes can, can div, div, like the number of VMIs running all of these nodes, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's also like important because I feel like, like you can run one VMI per node, but you can also like 10, 10 VMIs per node, right? And these are like two different Two different yeah. scenarios, yeah. Okay. So we'll need a whole description. So the scale topology will need like, we've seen this many nodes, uh, the number of, oh, are you saying that we'd, we'd rather have the number of VMIs over the number of nodes or is it that we need I think both? both. I've, I think both are, are interesting um, okay. because like, if you have like really large nodes that that's also like, um, interesting to, to see how how many you can pack etc yeah okay okay so we guess we can do some sort of maybe this is the same so we do like we have this we do like we we do like this so um let me, let me move this up here there so we'll do like um What's our scale topology? This many nodes, this number of VMs. You know, what's the hardware and cluster information? We may we come up with like a chart or something like that can give us like a sense of okay, here's just here's some. This has been proven to to work, um, and this is what you should expect to work with V1. So, I mean, I think what, what, like, so if I was someone looking at this, here's what I kind of come up with my takeaway. If I were to read this and say like, okay, here's, here's like, we'll say, um, we'll say Red Hat, you know, Red Hat is like seen this number of nodes in production and they have, you know, this number of VMs. So like my take, my takeaway would be that, okay, I can achieve at least this number of nodes that's been done by someone. Um, 
regardless of how I do the number of VMs, I, I should at least be able to achieve this number of nodes. I think that's valuable. And then the same with this, like you say you have a different number of nodes, whatever. Someone has seen this number of VMs. Okay, there should be a configuration that this is possible. Um, and then hardware and cluster, Kubernetes cluster information, again, same thing. Like, so this will just give us like, it won't be like a very one dimensional thing as in like, okay, Qvert can scale to as many nodes. It's more like we're giving a, a recipe for our, you know a few things that could get it to scale. So I, I think that's valuable. I think it's a good start. I think what we'll do is we'll, we can try and build on this to maybe isolate some of these variables, but I think this is, this makes sense as a, as the first, probably the first way we could advertise this information. Just so it's not misunderstood, I, I think that's a good idea. Okay, so what about this? Do we need to do the same thing for vert launch or memory consumption at all? Like this should be, this should be, uh, this is hard coded, right? So this is, we don't really need to have any other information or any context about it, or do people disagree? I think we don't, we just need to be careful because like virt launcher usually consists of, of two, two processes. Like one is this, uh, I don't know, like watcher or mo monitor uh, as, as it's called. And there is this, this main virt launcher process. And although this monitor is, is quite small right now, I think in the, the latest cool vert, uh, it still um, it still adds up if you if you want to start many many uh, VMIs in in the single node. So we just need to be um, be careful about this. But I feel like it's it's okay to just just state the and the consumption here. So I think um, along those lines, um, I if we have more, um, I think if I think the ver launcher memory can vary based on the, like the number of devices. Um, I believe, I think if we have like, if we're passing in like more than like three devices that the, the memory consumption increases. Hello, I think the number of threads is also a type of resource consumption we should pay, pay attention to. Okay, so how how can we how can we express this though? Thread, number threads. of thread. So the number of threads the vert launcher is using. Yes, but we can we could just just say that that the the memory consumption that that we stated is is on default ones that that I think are right now set to ten or something like this, uh, because like it it depends. Uh, it can depend a lot, like if you if you change the the number of threads, and I feel like we it's not not necessarily a um, um, a, like like we we can spend a, a lot of time on, on uh, like trying to to see how like how many uh, how memory consumption depends on threads, but not sure if it, if it if that's uh, valuable. Uh, in in the for for the consumer someone well, just starts well so one question about this the, the threads um does the number of threads uh have anything to do with um the like the number of devices for example the number of like how would this how would this change like or is it or is it what you're after like here's what the expected thread count is and it should not change over time uh, we found that uh, vert launcher used too much threads. Too much threads. Okay. Okay. So the, so the only thing with this is we need to figure out like so the, I mean this might be a problem that we have to address like with um like where we at least have to address like with its performance. But I mean, is this valuable? Like if I come along as a user and I look at this, I, threads might be too low level for like how I want to consume this information in a V1 setting. Like, do I need, like, I want to know, like, if I'm the user, if I'm the customer, I want to say like, how many, what's my performance? What's my scale? 
that's what I want to get from this information. The number of threads isn't going to tell me like how many, how well I can perform or how, what my scale is. It'll, it'll be a comparison across releases, but it's might be too low level. Like, can we, is there something else we could use? Like, does this lead to some other information, like causing it to consume too much memory or something? Like, what is this, what does this cause? Okay. Well, I, I think I think we need to think about this one as to like we there's probably a performance enhancement here. Okay, we'll have to think about that. I, I think um I the thing that I'd be interested in is like I because I, I think the number of devices, like if we have a bunch of SRIOV devices, if we increase it to a certain count, it becomes it increases the memory. This would be good to measure. Uh, does the number of... Okay, is that all affect our calculations and how many VMs we can use? And this might be good for context. It is really the point. Like, here's our memory consumption. Here's the context. One device, one, zero to one devices, and, and what you can expect. Okay, we'll have to think about this one a little bit more. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that we're gonna use the defaults here. I think what's the no fork back true or something? Or is that what it is? Or no false? So we have the monitoring process in place. Yeah. I know. Okay. I'm gonna assume that we're just gonna do that because that's gonna be the default. Okay. Um, we have Livert D memory consumption. This one. Um, okay. This is a low level as well. What could we advertise to the user? So it would be covered in the launch of memory consumption, but is there any scenarios that causes liver to use more memory? Any types of VMs, any way that people would use Qbert that would cause the liver to use more memory? Do we know? Okay, we gotta think about these two. I'm gonna pull them out for now though. We need to, we need to investigate these two because um, I think I don't think we can include them just yet. We need to see how they relate to the effects for launcher memory. So we need we need to understand that before we can add these as context. Okay, our last one here that we have is. VM creation deletion time. So how would we do this? And what would be the context? I'm guessing similar to this. Maybe, how about like PVCs? Uh, if we like data, like if we have PVCs or not, pod creation time, maybe number of API servers, I think that it all could affect us. Mm. I don't think like we should worry about like PVCs, for example, because like that's that's something kind of optional and and also like very dependent on how like because like if we are starting BMI, it like it depends how how the user provides the the image to uh, to the PVC, for example, like this base um, base one. And also, like it depends how how the PVCs or PVs are are started. Um, so so I feel like um, this this kind of uh, may may also like affect this this creation time and deletion time. Um, but but not, it's not helpful uh, for for the um, for the whole um, like metric to to measure. Similarly, when, when you just start a pod, like you, you just just want to see how how the fast like the the minimal pod starts, and yeah, yeah. I'm wondering if we for this one we report what we have in our performance periodic jobs, maybe something along those lines, like the P95s and the P50s or something. Based yeah, on yeah, our... I think yeah. Maybe like we just say, you know, in, in CI over, you know, whatever, like three months. Uh, 
we saw, and it's like P95 is, I don't know, something. And P50 is, is something, you know. We don't have deletion time in, in currently in that job, but we can we can at least do creation time. I think that's that's okay. I think that would just give us like a, a just a starting point. I think just because I think that's probably the most we can come into, just because it's we like you're saying it gets it really gets into some of this and it get you know it and um, you know at least we have a job that's that says something that we can. So here, here actually, here's what I like about this is that. If with this, with this, with this, if we do it by through CI, we can, you know, we CI is going to stay consistent or should stay consistent as we go through different releases of Qbert. So we should be able to take this metric and um, and consistently show like the changes. Say we're having performance improvements, you know, because of a a pull request, for example. You know, maybe on that release we say performance improvement. We show it in the P95, the P50, and you know, in the PR even links to it or something. So, um, Brian, I'm wondering if, like, this context will lag uh, the releases. So, let's say we released V1 and these metrics on on the date of V1 release, right? At that point in time, the three months is not actually V1 release. Um, so how? I'm just wondering how do we tackle that issue? So I, I missed what you said in the middle. Can you repeat it? Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, let's say we are releasing V1 today, right? Yeah. And these numbers are out uh, in some form on, on the release notes um, today. Um, so the past three months in CI that we are reporting is not actually V1. It's the culmination to V1 release, right? So, um, how how do we like account for that that fact? Um, do you mean like it's that the numbers aren't accurate? That only the numbers from today are accurate, or yeah? So the 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 release so. It's not the entire V1 release, right? Like, so maybe we could report from code freeze all the way up to uh, the release or something where it's it's more, uh, the, the code base is more reflected towards a V1 release rather than a, a change across our time. Yeah, okay. So I, I think what you're getting at is it's sort of actually a problem in the, so I think it's maybe a problem with the release process. So well, let's, let's tackle it this way. Let's say we've done the V1 release and we're about to do a V1.1 release. Mm -hmm. So three months go by and we've been testing the performance for those three months. So would it be, so do we still have the problem then if, if we've been testing from V1 to V1.1, here's what we saw throughout this time period, it's, you know, it's the same or something, the same performance. Do we, do we still have this issue? Like with the way that we're doing the releasing? No, I, I think that would be more reasonable. I, I think on, on an alternative side, right? Like what if, like, is there any value in having a job that, uh, you know, starts maybe um, 10, performance and scale jobs uh, with one particular uh, image that, that is built, let's say we want image built and we report mm -hmm. these these numbers for from that job. Uh, is there any value uh, in any in a job like that? Th that way we can you know concretely say okay v1 release, uh, has these performance numbers? V V one point one release has these performance number, and like even before we are about to release the V one point one, we can compare that. Okay, there is a regression. We are significantly down on our P ninety fives or P fifties, 
and uh, we need to block our release or we need to take X, Y, Z action uh, mm -hmm. on, on the release. Yeah, I think what I'm hearing you say is that we need some sort of official test that we do like right before we release that will tell us these numbers, it tells exactly these numbers, but based on a code freeze. So instead of looking at it over time, we do it right at the end so that we make sure we're not, we're not, we're not mistaken, like, a, you know, by say like an average over time. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. I, I mean, uh, I could see value in both of those. So average over time is also important. Like we can, we can, there is one data point that that can be had across like uh, average over three months. And then the other data point for just release management and tracking uh, the, the numbers across um, the, the releases and how we are doing in terms of scale. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, so I agree with you. I think like we could do, we could run this performance job. We can run it anytime. I think what we do, maybe when we like, Maybe there's like a patch that we do, like it says like official vrun release, and in it we just run the performance job, you know, and the job just whatever it's just a readme change or something, I don't know, and and we run or we just run it manually, whatever, and that's what tells us that's what we use as our final data reading, and that's what goes into the release notes or something. Yeah, I I think that's fine. I mean, or we use the average or whatever. I think. Um, I guess like for, for right now, I'm, I'm sort of, um, because we don't, we don't have like the, uh, we don't have the, we don't have the first release to base off of to compare. We're just gonna be, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I guess we could, we could just do it, you know, based on our last reading. I, that's sort of what we can do. I, like the last, we can run a, a run a job right before we do the V1 and that's what we report. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. I like I think over three months, whatever we can. Yeah, so I guess so. Here I'll put, I'll put it this way. So um, maybe we don't say over three months. We'll just say um, here's our performance. Here's our uh, performance job reading. Whatever the P fifty P ninety five. Yeah, that's fine. I think we'll just let's just keep it simple. Let's let's do that. We'll just run it once and we'll call it a, we'll call that as our, our V1 numbers. Okay. 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 Yeah. I mean, if we, if we want to do a little more averaging then for, from the same, same like pre-release image, we can run 10 of those and average it. So that will be like less, um, it will be more certain and less like environment yeah. specific, but yeah, this sounds good to me. Yeah, I think like the reason I was kind of thinking about the average is because I wanted to try and incorporate some people that are doing their PRs and if there is a performance increase, um, it would be interesting to have that data to show and when it happened. But I, I think maybe that's just a formality, like something we do at the end, you know, like here's what's, or maybe people, you know, we have it in the release notes. This is a performance increase. You know, here's where, we, here's what the increase is. I mean, I guess we get it at the end, right? We, we still get it. So it yeah, and uh, we can run this job as an optional job on, on the PR itself, right? So for example, right. Marcelo was working on a PR uh, and uh, that was increasing uh, or well, that was affecting the creation time if we had a job and numbers reporting like that, like we could set up uh, a job that could be run on that PR and report numbers there. So, I mean, that's that's one way of concretely uh, finding out what PR. Uh, yeah, like I think the PR specifically affecting numbers. Yeah, I think I think okay. I think the, I think the right way to sort of wrap this up is that we don't have the infrastructure right now to say like, to really get the data that's like, okay, here's where we can see the change and come in and, you know, the PR and whatnot. I, I think, I think someone would have to tell us, I think we just don't have the infrastructure to track it. So let's just go with what we know is going to work, which is like, let's run this at the end and that's what will be our numbers. And we'll compare it to when we do it the exact same time on the previous release. 
So I think that's a good starting point. We can always try to improve to be more specific, like to show the different changes and you know, maybe the different changes in performance. Um, I, yeah, because I think it's a different problem. It's like, because for example, the one, the one problem I'm most worried about is like regression, right? Like when did it happen? Where did it happen? Yeah. That kind of thing is where we want to know. And we do have thresholds in the job, but it's still like, you know, our thresholds are generous. Like if we, if we see a, a pretty, you know, whatever 10% regression, it's going to be within the threshold, but you know, we don't, yeah. we don't, we want to so, know where that is. Yeah, I think Ryan, that's a very valid concern. And uh, one thought that immediately comes to my mind is um, what, can we like run this performance job as a weekly or maybe a nightly and then process it like in our scale community calls, like the way we process other other jobs? Um, that way, like uh, over time, we know what commits are going in and we can maybe report these numbers in, in the uh, community calls for uh, Kubeford. Um, yeah, I, that might be a lot of work, but um, just a thought on. Yeah, on I think no. I, I mean, it's, I guess it's the right direction. I mean, we mostly do. I mean, we do kind of like I try to review it when when we can, but like there's um the problem is like I don't always remember exactly what they were. We I, it has to be automated. I think like the best way to do this oh, yeah. is is to like it, like I that's the difficult part. Is like this we need to take these and they need to be. We need to take them and put them into a, a better visualization that can track this over time yeah. because it's it's just difficult to tell from one week after one week goes by like did we like are we roughly the same did we get worse whatever yeah. Yeah. so I, 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 I think yeah I think there's an optimization here that I think will get us in that you know it, it basically get us more accurate readings during the releases and then. So I think for now, like we'll just say for V1, let's just let's just say, okay, we're gonna give an, a reading at the end based on our CI job. We have a P95 and a P50. And I, I think that'll be enough. And it'll just be creation. We can't, we don't have completion right now. Unless we want to do it, I mean, I it's fine. I mean, we could we just this will need a patch if we want to do deletion time. So um, we'll just say honestly, creation time. I think we should, I think there is value in adding deletion time as well because yeah. sometimes the finalizer stays on uh, and it would be good to understand like when the delete command was issued and at, at what time it, the, the object has been finalized and released. Um, to me, that, that seems to be valuable information. Um, yeah, I agree. I think it act, it might be actually a small change. We might delete, we might delete, but we don't. We run our our um, our audit tool after the creates, so it might be as simple as just running this audit tool again after the delete. It might it might it, so it might be an easy change, but it would be good to have. But we do we do need a change though to to address this. Yeah, I mean I. I would be happy to help uh, if if you want to track this in, in an issue like. Um, yeah, why don't we? So if you want to create, Lily, like, why don't you create an issue here? Um, I'll do a. I'll add you a lay. Uh, create upstream issue. Okay, and then if you want, um, if you have a patch for it, I can. We have it in time for V one. I can review it. I think. Yeah, I, I actually don't think it'll be a ton of work. We just need to. Just need to run our auto job at the sure. end. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there a date for V1 out already? I'm sorry, I missed. I might have missed it in the community call. Or no, there's not. There isn't a date yet. Um, so what's, I, what's gonna happen? So I, I think, um, is I'm just talking with some of the maintainers now and trying to find kind of the how the right way to coordinate this. So, um, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think there's a date, but, um. I, I'll, I'm just trying to push to, I'm trying to push to find one because it hasn't been, a, there hasn't been a date for a while. So I, I'm working on figuring yeah. that out. No. So I, yeah, I would no. say like, we'll aim, I would say we aim for like sometime later in the year is when, is when V1, when we, when Kubert won, I hit V1. I think that's, I think it's been on everyone's mind for a while. Okay. Yeah. I, I think that sounds great. Um, uh, I, I'm, I should be able to 
follow up on that issue before we would. Okay. All right. Thanks, Soleil. Okay. This looks pretty good, guys. Um, I, I think so. We have three things. So it's, it's we'll do a scale, a topology with some context, a vert launcher memory consumption with some context, creation time with our CI job. I think those are really good. And we'll have to, we'll have to think about these some more. I think we need to consider, we need to think about this some more to see how this could fit in. But I think this would be all really, really valuable. I think this would be good additions to how we report releases. Um, okay. One one question I had was, um, so um, on, on the creation and the deletion time, um, I think um, the the concerns that you raised and the automation is is going to be good, nice to have. Um, do we want to uh, capture that somewhere? Uh, so like if, yeah. if somebody comes in and says that, okay, I have some spare time and I want to contribute, like we can um, ask for help. Yeah. So we so we review we review it manually and sub scale. Uh, we need a so what do we need? We need an automated, um, a better way to visualize the um, performance changes over time. I think that would capture it. I, I, I think that's what we need. So we just need, I, I don't know, this, I guess, visualize, maybe we need yeah. some. Some sort of tools. We to do need this. that. It might be too. I don't know if it would be trivial or or not. Um, maybe like first starting point is just weekly emails or something like that. That hey, last week it was this. Today it is this. Um, okay. That's one way. I mean, to me, that would be a easy way to get started. But then eventual goal would be maybe a chart that someone could go over. Yeah. And we can look at, yeah, I, I think those are all good ideas. Oh, yeah. Kai, can I ask a question? Uh, sure. So I'm new, I'm new here actually. Um, I'm also from, I'm from the per, per, um, uh, and scale department. Um, my manager wanted me to come here just start picking up some stuff Marcelo was doing. So I might start joining this meeting soon. Um, I was curious um, why the VM boot time is not uh, included here. Okay. Hmm. Let's well let's talk about it. Um, hmm. So this would be um, so we'll, we'll break it down. This would be when the we the vert launcher is defined the domain, and then we have we'd measure that time until we. Um, until the guest boots. Okay. So the um, we don't have a way to measure that today. I don't I don't believe there's a metric for it. So I oh, think I we see. have a gap there. I think we would need to have a way to measure it first. So we only have right now with the VM the VMI transition times, the phase transition times, we have, you know, like phase, we have like a scheduling scheduled or to running. The transition from scheduled to running is close. It's when the domain gets defined, the um, the VMI goes to running phase. So it's somewhere after that is when we go to running, but we have no endpoint. We have no point where it says like VM booted. Mm -hmm. So we have to, we would need something to to report that. I think it's possible we would just need something in the code to capture these. And maybe like a, we need to be something how we communicate between the launcher and the, the handler maybe to figure that out or the guest agent mm -hmm. probe or something. There, there might be a way to do it, but we don't have it. Sure, yeah, I was just uh, wondering, um, yeah. So um, I had a question regarding that. Um, does Word Launcher report any kind of metrics back uh, to Prometheus or something? Um, I don't know. I think there is some, but don't quote me. I, I don't, I haven't looked in a little while, so I, I, I don't remember. I think there, I know there's a bunch in the handler and controller. So I might be something to take a look at a I, I don't know. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think so if, if, if it were to report, um, uh, 
from matrix then uh, i was thinking that what launcher could report the actual boot time right um, regardless of when api uh, reports it as running yeah Yeah, I mean, I think to investigate this, yeah, we'd have to go into the root launcher. We'd have to figure out um, if there currently is a way that it the launcher reports, hey, guest booted, um, or maybe liver does or something, or maybe there's a way, if, if it doesn't, maybe there's a way we can find out and, and then report it. And that would give us a, and then we just expose it to Prometheus. I, I, think, I think it's possible. It's just, we don't, yeah, we just don't have it. That would be a cool metric to add though. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'll add it to the list. I mean, I think it's something with that, you know, if someone has some time they can pick up, I think it'd be a really cool addition. Okay, so for now, I, I think though, I, we'll stick with these three. I think that, you know, since they're, I think they're just achievable and already exist now. And I think there's something we can, there's some value in these. And and I think like, you know, we got some, so a few, we got this and we've got these are ones we could investigate while we have, V1 is is unfolding in the community. So I guess along along that lines, is there anything else that we think? So we have three here we 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 have and we can report on. We have two that we think um, we have some ideas we that we could also add. Are there any other ones we think are missing that would be really important to the user that we should at least consider? All right, I'll take that as a no. So if you think of something, we can we can bring this topic up again in another meeting. I think um, we, like I said, we have some time to think about it, but keep it in the back of your mind if you think of something, and we just so we have some if we have some time to implement these things, we should we should invest some resources in it. Okay, um, that was all I have for V one then. So let me see. Um, I see Federico here. Um, Federico, did you want to go over this issue again? I don't know if you have any updates on this. Uh, okay, no, I have no updates, um, except for the fact that um, it's, I don't know if uh, we can uh, uh, say this, but uh, uh, it seems like that there is um, a memory leak because we saw that uh, the RSS anon uh, always uh, increasing. So uh, together with Antonio and Lugo, we are trying to investigate the, the C part, the SIGO part uh, with the tools that are uh, not quite easy to install, but uh, after a while we succeeded on it. So we are running our memory test uh, with the uh, in the SIGO part, and uh, I hope that next week we will have some updates about it. Okay. Cool. So because, that's... Uh, we 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 increase if you remember correctly if you remember we increased the um, the virtual launcher overhead from uh, seventy five to one hundred uh, megabytes, mm -hmm. but uh, the the test that uh, we were running uh, exceeded uh, also the 100 uh, megabytes. Uh, so. Oh, you've already gone through the 100. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, uh, right. uh, yeah, when uh, this happens, uh, we say, okay, mm, let's try to investigate again uh, and go uh, deeper. Uh, because the Go profile doesn't show anything. Uh, so uh, it, it should be probably in the SIGO part. But uh, yeah, as I said, the tools to, inv for, uh, uh, to investigate in the uh, SIGO part uh, are not so easy to install uh, inside the virtual launcher. But yeah, I, I, I'm doing it uh, right now. Uh, so uh, what, uh, what tools are you using? Uh, I I tried Vibrant and uh, it was quite impossible to install in our uh, launcher because uh, it 
exploits basically also it seems that there was problem with the permission and the cdinux but also uh, running a uh, virtual launcher as a root it uh, uh, doesn't it doesn't work so uh, i tried the uh, ip track that is a uh, binary uh, but it has some problems uh, so uh, right now i'm trying a uh, memory uh, i will uh, send you uh, the the link and uh, now it, it is working on my local uh, my local uh, environment yeah i had to do some um, tricky uh, stuff like uh, adding uh, kernel modules uh, manually but yeah uh, now it's working. okay i think what would be really interesting uh, so take notes what you're doing because um we might run across this again in the future and if there's like a a flag or something if we could if, if there's a way we could implement like your create yes. image to do this and yeah yeah you know yeah we should do we, that we, we were already thinking about it uh because it could be uh, really good to uh, have a way, a simple way to say, okay, let's say, let's see if there is a memory leak inside our virtual launcher. Also, also because it's a critical part of the virtual launcher. So yeah, I think that it should be good. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Federico. Okay, cool. No, that's good to hear. Okay, good. Um, all right. So for uh, oh, sorry. Mm, yeah. I, I I was forgetting. And uh, uh, Antonio uh, was uh, trying with uh, JMalloc. Uh, that is another uh, tool uh, inside uh, inside Go. But I, I don't remember. I don't know if I have the the link. Uh, if I had, I will uh, post it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, whatever, whatever you guys come up with that makes, that will give us the data that will work. Yeah. Let's make it a, uh, yeah, whatever, whatever you guys come up with is fine. We'll, we'll use uh we should just use it as like a, a tool we can make available or something. I, I don't know. I don't have a preference. I think that's seems okay. <laughs> whatever, yeah. whatever goes to the information. Yeah. yeah. Basically we uh, were trying uh, all, all the tools. Uh, yeah. The first one, uh, uh, yeah, as uh, the, uh, FPBF uh, tool, uh, um, me and Lugo are very exciting. So we, I think that we are happy that 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 one was the the one who works. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, because this is eBPF, and we if we can get one of the eBPF tools to work, then uh, there are a bunch of other networking and CPU tools that i know for ebpf that that also can be used for other things so that that's why i was very excited yeah yeah i i, I didn't investigate into it but uh, i i i saw that there was there were a, a lot of uh, tools so yeah absolutely nice All right, that's that's really promising. That's good. Um, good to hear. That's making some progress. Okay. Um, let's see. For uh, any other topics, I don't. Um, we could do a quick review here. Um, I think uh, we'll just take a quick look. I didn't uh, have a chance to merge your MRLA, so I didn't. Um, so we don't. We still have our performance. Yeah, but it's still failing. So let's look at just the. Just the periodic uh, for performance. Yeah, not this one. Okay, everything looks fine. We're still within our thresholds and our numbers. All right, still. P95, P99 is really good. This is very consistent. Okay, pretty good. That it looks really good. Okay. Good. Okay. Um, all right. Are there any of the topics people have before we?
close out. Okay. All right, everyone. Thanks for your time. See you online. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.